Hi everybody, Miss Jennifer here, and I am going to introduce you to this iconic image today, which it was made back in World War II. And they made this, and this is Rosie the Riveter, to get women to go to work in the factories where all the men were at war. We all know we never really went back to uh, things as usual after that happened. But it's such a famous image that it's used all over the world. I found this one, and they were using it for Black Lives Matter. I found this one, and they were using it in the Mexican Revolution. I found this one, and this one was in the paper just the other day. And as you see, Rosie is saying, we can do it. We can get rid of the coronavirus if we all get our vaccine. So let's take a look at how we can draw our own version of Rosie the Riveter in honor of International Women's Month and American Women's History Month. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. We're going to begin and we're going to just use our pencil, black pen, and color pencil. That's all you need today. And we're going to start with our 2.5 by 3.5 card. Now, if you want to make it bigger, that's fine. If you're not doing artist trading cards with us, that's okay, too. Now, I've been doing this with the kids that I teach in the afternoons, and it, they think it's really hard. But we're going to analyze or break down what it is exactly that we need to do to create this image and learn a little bit about drawing as we go. All right, so the first thing that I want to do is take my pen, and I'm going to draw a border around the outside of my card. Now remember, if you're doing this on a bigger piece of paper, that's fine. If you don't want a border, that's fine too. But this um, was a poster and designed as a poster, so it's a pretty good idea to um, do the border on it. Now, let's go ahead and take our pencil, and we're going to, say, divide this in four, which we've been doing some division on some of these. And we'll just do one fourth line across here. And then we'll do a little hook, and that will be the word. Let's see if you can see it. Yep, there you go. Very light, I draw it. All right, now we learned this in the very beginning about how to draw humans. And what we're going to do is we're going to lightly, and I'm going to do it a little bit darker than lightly so that you can see. I'm going to draw an oval. Now, notice I just kind of loosely draw it. And it gives it kind of a little bit of life when you draw this way. We will ink it in just a little bit. <clears throat> so this is how you draw the head. Now watch. Remember this. We have a central axis, which is just a line down the middle. And, for, and um, I am drawing it lighter than I want you to draw it. I want you to draw it super light. So get used to that because it's a very um, good skill. Now, we want to divide it in half this way. And we learned that this is where the eyes go. So in, right here in the middle is where I'm going to draw my almond shape for the eyes. Okay. Now, watch this. Here we got an eyebrow here and an eyebrow here. And really what happens is you have a connection that comes all the way down here. And then we have the nose, which is halfway. So the bottom of the nose should be about right here. So I'm just going to draw this for the nose and the bottom. Okay? Now, halfway between here and here, we're going to draw the main line of the lips. Now, she's not really smiling. She's firm and resolute. She's going to get the job done, and we're just going to give her a nice bottom lip. And if for any reason you have a short distance right here, you don't want that. You want to have a chin because this is the bottom of the jaw. So we got to have some room there. So feel free to... Um, bring that down. Now, Rosie does have ears. We learned that ears go from the, this area right in here all the way down to below the nose. Okay, so we're looking good. Don't forget that um, Rosie does have eyeballs or irises in her eyes. So we're going to go ahead and add those in. Don't leave your eyes white. Okay, now, you have a choice on what you want to do. Um, I didn't want to do this one because this is a little bit harder to draw. We're going to keep it simple and um, draw this one, okay? And because this one is good and um, 
instead of now when this when they did this rosy now you can draw this rosy if you want I'll show you the difference on how to do it now this is uh, the original rosy and they wore uh, bandanas because they wanted to keep their hair out of the equipment so that uh, red bandana is very iconic part of the symbol so you see here it's been translated into a red headband and that is fine too so I will show you how to do first this one, then this one. Okay, now watch this. So now we have the head built. We just have to add the shapes we want. So first of all, I'm going to draw my bow. Boom, simple, right? Now the bow, bow comes down and around the ear like that. And then it comes around the other side. And that's it. That's where it goes. And the, the next thing you do is add this great beautiful hair. And that's it. There she is. Rosie. And then she does have a little bit of hair here at the bottom. Now, if you are doing the uh, other version, let's say that here's uh, Rosie, what you would do is you're going to bring this um, bow up here, and then you will bring the scarf around the head and up. And then you just give her a little hair right there. And that's it. And that will be the same. Um, whenever, Once you learn to construct the skull and the head, you can put anything you want to on it and it will make sense. Okay, now let's get ready for some hard work. First of all, let's go ahead and draw her neck right here. So remember that the neck kind of comes right below the ears. It's not too wide, too small. Now, watch this. Here comes her collar. So this is just kind of a square shape, like this. And then the other side is over here. So that's a little complicated. If you want to, just draw that like that, and that's fine. Now, the back, just imagine this comes around, and then around and down. There's her back. Now, here comes the super fun part. The arm is really, we're going to draw it like, um... A big sausage <laughs> you know like just imagine that you're drawing a big round ellipse there and then up here we're going to draw a circle near the face you see now it's helpful if you have one of these if you don't have one that's okay too you can look it up on the internet there's a million rosies out there that you can look at so as you see it goes boom boom so we're going to go down like that and then hook these up right here at the elbow and then the arm is like this okay now if you want to get specific on some of these um, uh, designs of the hand you can but you can just do it very simple like this or you can just do it very simple like this one here now she got a little bit of broken head but I was trying this one upside down so forgive me on that one but, yeah, it can be very simple. It doesn't have to be uh, very elaborate. The main thing is that you have the pose that looks like rosy. Now, here's something that's really hard, too. Well, it can be. So, she has, she's pulling up her sleeve right here. So, I'm going to go one, two, three, four. And that's going to be my fingers where I'm pulling up the sleeve. Now, watch what I'm going to do here with the sleeve. It goes around the arm. Don't do a straight line right here. Make it go around. That's called contour. And then you can make um, this sleeve have uh, wrinkles because it would, right? Like you're pulling up your sleeve, showing off your arm. There you go. And now we have to have the bottom and the elbow comes out here. Now it's fine if you go off the page and then here is the other side of her body and that's it. Cool, huh? Now, what I like to do is take a bigger um, Sharpie to write the um, words. It doesn't look like I have one sitting here right now, so I'll do it that way. I'm going to grab my black. Hmm. Ah, here's one. And we really want to be careful because we're going to write, we can do it, but we want to make it fit. We don't want it to go down. We want to go straight across. So be very careful. Maybe you want to write it first with your pencil like this. We can 
do it. The main thing is that you can read it because there is, it is very ineffective form of communication to write something you cannot read when that's the whole purpose of the design. So you can see I couldn't make it this small with this pen, but that's okay. Now, if you don't have a thick pen, that's fine. You do not have to have that. Now, let's get back to working with this uh, regular pen. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, this comes in front. So she actually comes right in front of the, uh, the bubble there, which is fine. And I'm going to just draw, start drawing everything in. And if it's a line that I don't want to keep, I don't draw it. So please don't draw the T. That was just for structural purposes that we had that. So don't draw that T on her face um, for some reason. A lot of people have been doing that. And so I'm reminding you not to. And here's her little nose. And the eyes. Now this is very small, so it's hard to get a lot of detail. And here we go with those nice lips. And then at this point, you can kind of do the face a little more sculpted, if you're good at that, just to make her look a little more feminine. And maybe I'm just, I'm going to leave that line open there. Okay, she's starting to look good, huh? All right, now. Here comes the collar, and I'll just go ahead and make it like that. And then here's her neck, and then there's the other side of it. We've got our fingers, our shoulders. And so we, when we made these lines, we just made it so that we were building the form. And at any point here, I can change it up a little bit to make it more like what I want it to look like based on my um, visual reference. And we, mu we mustn't forget this part where we curl across there. Okay, now it looks like I put that See where I messed that up? I'm going to see if I can fix it with a little white out, but this might mess me up later on, but I don't like that. So I should have taken my time when I was writing those words, but I was so busy talking to you, I forgot. Now, this is just white out. You can usually get some of this cheap kind at the dollar store if you want to. My only problem with that is once I do it with the pencil, it's probably not going to look right. We'll see. It's always nice to see how um, other people solve problems like this. And now I got it all over the table. Okay, boom. Wipe that up. All right. You know what we got to do next? Exactly. It's time to erase. Now, with my little whiteout fiasco there, I had time to let this dry. Remember, especially ballpoint pen, it needs a little to drying time because if you don't, it will smear. And we do really don't want that. And I'm going to erase all this except for that part where I've got the white, which that part is still wet. Okay. Okay, now, so we have decided to do the African American Rosie. Now, watch what I'm going to do here. This is important. I'm going to get a regular brown. And I'm going to color in everywhere with their skin. But I'm going to color it in lightly. And you'll see why in a minute. Now, don't scribble. Like, don't do this. That looks terrible. Or don't do like this. Just do very lightly like this. And blend it all together so it all looks like one color. Get rid of all the white. Now, this is a very small area. So you can focus and get it done properly. You don't have to stress over it, but at the same time, you want to do it correctly. And I'm going to color each part individually so it doesn't uh, look like it's all one thing. So if I color it all 
as one thing it will look like one thing so we don't want it to look like one thing we want to look at like each individual parts now see even though I went in different directions I'm filling the whole thing in so it's gonna look okay ha oh, love it okay now we learned this earlier but let's go over it again what we're going to do is we're going to put some darker areas around the outside of our shapes to help it look a little bit round i'm also going to put some shadow in here around the eye because we do have that um, area in there where the eyes are sunk in and that's important and will always be a little bit darker than the rest there's usually a shadow underneath the nose and the chin and so we're going to make this face look round by giving it this nice contour and remember when light hits an object the lightest part will be the top and it will get darker as it goes around now it could be you know the lighting is different and usually there's a little bit of shadow underneath hair so we'll get that too and we will do the same thing here and we just blend in Woo, look at that. Easily, it starts to look around. Remember, these arms are round, so we want to make sure that, especially this bottom part, would be the darkest, right? And this one will be real dark because it's underneath the other one, so we're going to make that real dark. So sometimes it's just logical the way things would look. All right, starting to look pretty good, huh? Now you can see, it looks like the light on her is shining right here and right here. Um, you can get sophisticated with it as much as you want. Uh, what we're gonna do next is, oh, we need a shadow here inside the sleeve. Woo, nice, and a shadow underneath his hand. Okay, next, we are going to take this and draw some dots now the reason why we're doing this is because we got to have the red and white dots and the only way to draw a white dot is just to draw a dot and then don't color it in at least the way we're doing it right now now we're going to grab our red i'm going to sharpen this real quick um, it's good to have sharp points when you're doing something small so I'll come in here with this uh, red and go around the dots. Now, remembering what we know about color, if we have red in one place, we need to put it somewhere else too, right? All right, so where else do you think we're going to put this red? You got it. We're going to give her some nice red lips. Back then, they used to wear lipstick, I think. If you look up Rosie the Riveter, there's songs about her. It was a big campaign to try to get women to go to work in the factories because all the men were in the war and it was a pretty bad war and it went on for a long time so it was really important now she's going to have brown eyes so i'm going to go ahead and give her some nice brown eyes and try to the color in the white if you can help it she has a beautiful black hair so up oh, black here we go and we can color it in with texture, which means I'm just going to curl it. I'm going to color it in as if it was actually curls I'm drawing on there. And this will make it look more naturalistic than if you just, you know, draw it straight up and down, which that's not what her hair looks like. So we're not going to do that. Her hair is nice and curly and pretty. All right. Now I want to make a little bit of emphasis around this bow. There we go. So I'm going to color it in a little bit darker around the bow so that will make it show up better.
sometimes uh girls you want to give them a little bit of when you have lashes just a dark area over the top will make that seem more likely all right and we can add a little bit of shadow in here with the black okay now fun 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 now it looks like this is dry let's see if it's going to work we have a beautiful yellow background so let's do that next and this part you want to go go hard coloring in nice and dark and you see she's starting to pop really nicely with that background now sometimes people you will say yellow is a uh, caution so it will make you stop and look. So when we have this uh, background, it's going to make us notice it. And they did want this poster to be noticed. So maybe that's why they use yellow. I don't know. But if we, and really, if your drawing is not that good, as long as it looks like a woman holding up her arm, then it's going to look like Rosie. And people will recognize it. So that's what's um, interesting about the... Uh, artistic process that you know visual images are very powerful and they use them for all different kinds of things they get you to buy things they get you to want things they get you to um, try to do things or sometimes they're just to make you feel happy um, if it's a beautiful picture now the last thing we're going to do is the blue now I'm going to color this carefully same way nice and light it's going to be a little bit darker down here because it's in the shadow and then we're going to go over this part dark and then make her round, same way we did before. This part will be in shadow. This part will be darker. Blend in. I bet you guys are getting good at this by now, huh? Okay, here we go. Rosie is starting to look amazing. And we are going to lightly draw. Now this part you do not want to be too dark, because why? That's right. We've got to be able to read those words. That is super important part of this project. If we can't read the words, we have failed. So don't make it real dark blue. If you don't have a light blue, maybe you can do, um, I don't know. Use it. See, the shirt is blue because denim was a color, I mean, a cloth that they used to wear back then. For It was represented working. And maybe they still do now. That's where they got the term blue collar workers. Workers that worked in factories and things like that. So things are a lot different now. But we still have to have people who can work in factories. And that's a really good job to have. And we'd be in big trouble if we didn't have people working in factories, wouldn't we? All right, so see how I did the outline? I couldn't make it too dark. It looked like my um, my little whiteout did fine right there. And there you have it. Our Rosie the Riveter in honor of International Women's Month. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. And I hope you keep practicing drawing. Um, drawing from observation of 2D to 2D is fun. And maybe you can even look at people who are sitting by you and give that a try too. Have a great day. Bye.